Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to begin uploading my various side projects and other such escapades in betwixt my pseudo journalistic videos about educational policy and stuff. Um, I thought it would be cool to document some of the actual more content sciencey stuff that I get up to. Um, it's going to be really common that the things that I do are both half work and half fun. So uh, today, for example, um, I'm going to be trying to solar charge my electric bicycle. So uh, my partner and I, we don't have a car anymore. We fully transitioned to electric bicycles to get to work, to get around, to do everything. Um, and for those rare cases where a car is somehow necessary, we just rent a car for a day or two. And that's what we've been doing. And obviously, you know, talking about alternative transportation has gotten me really interested in thinking about the sustainability aspect of sustainable transportation and infrastructure in general. And before we sold the car, we had a car. And I put a solar panel on top of it. It was like one of my first welding projects. And I welded a solar panel to the top. And we used that. Every time we would go really far into the backcountry, we would charge a big lithium battery and have power for pretty much ever. And it was a 200 watt panel, 240 watts. But I think of it as 200 watts just because you never, I just 80% rule something, something. Um, just for safety, I think of it as like a 200 watt panel at best. And now that this car's gone, we kept the solar panel. And I'm like, well, this is just sitting around. Maybe I should think of something to do with it. And I love the idea of solar powering things. I love the sort of solar punk movement, the aesthetics of it, but more importantly, the science of it and the infrastructure behind it. Um, so I want to do a little testy test of whether or not that's a thing that I could do with my time and with our lives. So I today am going to be trying to solar power our electric bikes, or at least solar charge them and use what is gathered through the day to charge them when we get back home for the night. And um, I always do things with as much redneck engineering as possible. You could call it hood engineering, you could call it redneck engineering, it depends. Same thing. Um, I'm going to use as cheap as possible methods. So some resources I already had going into this. I have three car batteries that I got from a um, scrapyard, uh, about $80 each, and they're lead-acid batteries, which obviously the chemistry of those has some drawbacks because their capacity is awful and you can only discharge them to about 50%. Um, but I bought them for my students as a, um, as a power source for like an electric go-kart or electric vehicle-type activity that we did and you know lead acid batteries do great in terms of um the number of amps that they put out so that's what we uh that's what i'm going to be using because it's what i've got uh, the price ended up not being that good i probably should have gotten a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery or lithium lead acid lithium iron phosphate battery i probably should have done one of those for you know 250 compared to the 240 for three car batteries it's not that good actually but that's what I'm working with. Um, already had it for class. Bought that with my own money, so they're mine. And uh, I'm going to mess around with using them for this. I think I only will need two in uh, parallel. Um, and that should be good, I think. But before that, I have to actually put stuff together. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that now. Um, other parts that I have. <laughs> this is a, a Duracell 350-watt inverter that I got for 7 bucks at a thrift store. And, of course, that's how that always goes. And for cordage, because I have to run the power from right outside of my garage to inside of the garage because there's a spot that has the best sunlight, I'm going to be using this, um, which is, I think, this used to be a handheld vacuum, like a handheld Black & Decker vacuum. But what matters is that I've got 16 gauge wire and like 20 feet of it. So I'm going to be using that and I'm going to be splicing it into the solar panel and then onto a solar charge controller. So I bought a solar charge controller for like $20. It's absolute garbage, but it works with lead acid. Um, I'm sure it won't last forever, but it'll work for this idea because it'll charge things up. And then obviously I'm going to be jumping from there to um, the inverter that we'll be using to go to then our plug-in chargers for the bicycles from an engineering standpoint this is stupid and very lossless because i'm going to be going from you know technically 12 volt solar panels but really they're like 18 volts um, i'm going to be going from those 
to charge a 12 volt battery, which means there's some stepping down going on for the MPPT tar solar charge controller. And then I'm going to be sending that to uh, an inverter to get it to 120 volts and then it's going to plug in it's going to be a plug to a 48 volt charger it's really lossy it's just awful um, if I were doing this myself I would obviously find a way to uh, skip the 18 volt to 12 volt to 120 back to 48 volt I'd, all of those jumps would not exist but this is just me jerry rigging something together and the purpose of this is like Sounds fun. I want to try it. And two, whatever I learned from this experience, I can take back to the classroom and talk about the ease or difficulty of seeing this kind of sustainable future, even though my situation is very specific. So I'm going to go get the jumpers for the solar panel. Um, I will do some snipping, some soldering, some shrink tubing. Sound good. Okay, quick summary of the things that I've done. Um, I spliced on the solar panel connector to my wire that I took from a vacuum. I think yeah, the vacuum was like $5. I'm going to tally in my head how much all this costs ultimately just for the thought of it. So I'm going to use two of the batteries, two of the uh, lead acid batteries, the car batteries. 80 bucks each, so it's 160 uh, The inverter was, let's round up to 10 so that's 170. I can probably round down the uh, thing I got the cord from to uh, 10. So 180, 190, 200. This was 200. The solar panel was about 250. So 450, probably 450 total, which I think is too high personally. That's way too high. You could probably get an integrated system for about the same cost. Um, but for just random things that I have, that's pretty good, I think. Um, you know, there's like the financial thought of will it ever pay itself off? Probably not. Let me do some math real quick. So, uh, you know, <laughs> let's say that it's 200 watt panel, 240 watts, but I'm going to say it runs at 200 most of the year. Multiply that by about eight hours of good sun. That means 1,600 watts. Um, 1,600 watts. Each of our bicycle batteries, so I'm going to use our, our strongest bicycle batteries. Those are um, about 650 watt hours each. So that's 650 times two. That's 1,300 watt hours. Um, we really only use maybe 60% of those 1,300 watt hours a day. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.6 real quick. It's about 780 watt hours. So we use about 780 watt hours a day of um, 70, 780 watt hours a day of electricity for the bicycles to get to work. Um, so let me go back to that. What is that? 780 watt hours, I think, times 0.6. 780 watt hours. Let me double check that. I feel like I just said that wrong. Where was where was my math again? I don't remember. Um, the panel will do sixteen hundred. Our bikes at max will do thirteen hundred or so, because we both have six hundred and fifty. Six fifty times two. Yep, that's thirteen times point six. Seven hundred and eighty. Let's round up to. Let's just say it's nine hundred. Let's say we use 900 watt hours. Cost of a kilowatt hour in Denver, Colorado, 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So we do that once a day. And I'll include the weekends. We end up using them about as much as we would. That's when we do our grocery trips and whatnot. So 
Uh, I can do 15 cents. 0 0.15. 0 0.15 times 365. Fifty-four dollars. Oh yeah, it would take forever to pay this stuff off. I mean, what would that take? Six years to pay itself off? If I use this system and I were looking at it from the perspective of trying to have it pay itself off, um, if we're using it under capacity, because it could really provide about sixteen hundred watts a day, if we use it to significantly less, like a quarter or a half, uh, no, a half. If we use about half of the full capacity of the system each day uh, just to charge the bikes it will take about let's see about eight years it would take eight years for the system to pay itself off in terms of uh, the reduced cost of electricity the, the amount of money we would save then again I bet electricity will maybe get more expensive moving forward I don't know it depends on what our state does with uh, being sustainable but it would take about eight years for it to pay itself off I'm not anticipating or caring for it, too. This is all items that I already had. I didn't have to buy anything new. Um, and by thrifting things, you get stuff super cheap. So if you had a lower power bike, you, you know, it'll pay itself off in like two years. Um, just by virtue of how much cheaper the components would be. But because we're running two 750-watt bicycles and we're using them so often every single day, um, we need the wattage of the system. The batteries are honestly the worst cost. I, I feel like if I could get those down or source them alternatively, I could make this system pay itself all, pay itself off a lot faster. But again, I don't know. Eight years is fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, home solar panel systems can take 15 to 20 years to pay themselves off. Stuff that you put on the roof. So just in terms of the idea of this scientifically, just for the fun of it, and and I I kind of like the gloating. I literally like the gloating of like. Yeah, my bike has zero impact right now. Zero carbon impact, direct carbon emissions, even from the wall, because the wall will not exist anymore. We'll be charging from the sun, which is really neat to think about. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and actually take the camera outside and um, record the rest of getting this set up and doing a first run. So that'll be fun. See you in a sec. Uh, would you look at that? It's working. I was 70% sure that it was not going to. Um, usually when I turn an inverter on, the fan immediately spins up. That's my expectation, and the fan didn't spin up on this, and I was like, what is going on? Um, so I tried one of the other inverters that we have from the car, back when we had a car. We had like a little cheap car inverter. I tried that, put it on backwards, destroyed that, and I was like, oh, well, I guess this will be an unconcluded episode, but it's working. Um, the light's on the bike charger and it's charging right now and if you know much about lead acid batteries typically they have a lot of voltage sag when you put current through them the voltage drops a lot it's holding steady 12.5 12.9 volts um, anywhere between there depending on the solar panel it's doing great so proof of concept established long-term results to be found out to be continued very nice well you know it's very funny and exciting right now this camera that I'm using um, I don't have a battery for it so I'm actually running it off of a dummy battery that plugs into a wall and I realize now that the system is working I can show the system's working there we go um, this camera is literally running off of this system right now 
So right now we've got the two car batteries. No, they're not matched, but yes, their voltages were about the same when they started. I had them both topped up. Um, this looks like a rat's nest, and if I did this professionally, it would look very different, but that's not really the point. The point is that this is a decentralized way that like a random person like me could DIY together uh, a means of literally creating a more sustainable method of charging their stuff. Um, this is gridless right now. And, you know, I mentioned before that the cost of this thing is probably $400 total, right? We've got 80, 80, 200 out there, 20 here, 20 here, um, 20 elsewhere. Um, you know, this is probably $500 total of stuff. But the irony is I think that DIYing it, I think if you bought like an equivalent system of this wattage with this ability and the smartness of this controller actually, which is pretty dope, um, if you bought this traditionally, I'm, I'm sure this would be like $2,000 or 1500 I might even find something comparable once I go inside. Um, but the idea is that, you know, I just made this. I'm just a random dude that can teach science and I made this, um, which is pretty neat. Pretty cool. But yeah, it's running. It's charging. It's charging the batteries with the panel and then it's charging the bike. It's great. I'll give you a bit of a close up on everything. Here's the solar charge controller. Ticking away, doing what it does. And there are the batteries hooked up like a, a rat's nest. But hey, it works. I'm literally powering this camera off of it. <laughs> right there, look, there's the wire. Isn't that funny? Okay, quick little post-mortem analysis. Um, that took about as long as I expected. That was like two hours. Um, but it works, you know? That's pretty fun. Uh, it's working pretty okay. And I think it will probably last as long as it really could. I mean, it's mostly a solid-state solid state system, which means it just kind of runs and runs and runs. In terms of my reflections for what I've learned, I don't know. I need to figure out a way to test polarity on things. You didn't see a clip of it, but I exploded one of the uh, the other inverter I tried to work on. I need to figure out a way to verify polarity on things where it doesn't show me. I don't know how to do that electrically yet, but that'd be a good skill to learn. Um, what have I learned in terms of prepping for my students? Not much. It's It's just not as hard as you might otherwise think it is to do a solar system like this to to put something together like this um as i was putting it together i was i couldn't help but visualize like oh if this were a a, a thing that you could sell to people as a product what would it look like and how much could you charge um within reason yeah it looks like a viable product like if you turn this into something I mean, I, I think a, a simpler DIY way of doing this would be to buy a flexible type of solar panel and then uh, put it into one of those all-in-one battery bank type things. And that would look nice, but I think you could kind of make this a lot more efficient over time. Then again, it would cost a lot more being from a manufacturer. But in terms of the sort of decentralized solar punk aspect of it, I love it. It's fun. It'll take eight, eight years to functionally pay itself off. But something I really wanted to reinforce is like playing with solar stuff is fun. Um, and it's very exciting because it's just so utilitarian. Having this to charge our electric bicycles, which is how we get to work, is cool. That's great. But it's also just a backup off-grid solar system that does 400 watts. I mean, I, for example, have asthma. That that can run my nebulizer. Um that could run a lot of very simple things, and um, that just comes with the territory of having anything that's off-grid that involves battery storage and an inverter, and I think that's pretty neat. So that was my screwing around for the day. This is my week's upload of STEM stuff. I'm, there's no way I'm going to call it that, but maybe it is STEM stuff, and that's what the name of this series is. Um, either way, I'll probably make an update video on this at some point, talk about how it's been, how it hasn't. And, um, yeah, sounds good. Have a good day.